everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy and Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for another behind the scenes video. This week I am going to be making a remake of a soap that I've done, but giving it a little bit of a facelift while I go about doing this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some melt and pour embeds to go on the top of this soap. I'm using the Stevenson's No Sweat Clear Melt and Pour to do these ones. Um, as I've mentioned in other videos before, I really like this No Sweat one. It is literally the only melt and pour I've come across for doing the embeds on the top of my soaps that don't sweat. And that means I can leave them sitting on the curing rack in our humid weather and I know that they're going to be fine. So I'm going to go and melt this lot in the microwave in um, 20 to 30 second bursts and I'll come back when it's melted down. Okay, so I have given this about three sort of 20 second bursts and I do still have little chunks in here like this. But this is how I like to get my melt and pour actually melted down to this stage. And then I let that residual heat that's in the glass and the melt and pour to finish melting it down. And the reason I do it that way is to stop the melt and pour from overheating and then it just becomes too horrible to actually use. While that is melting down in there, I am going to add some colorant into this one. The first bit I have is some Raspberry Rush Mica from Bath Bomb World and I'm going to put just a touch in here and with the melt and pores I tend to find I don't need nearly as much mica to get a nice colour in them. So you may have already guessed we are going to be making some raspberry embeds and I've mentioned before I don't quite like that real pinky colour that you get as a raspberry so I'm just going to add a couple of drops of a liquid red colourant just to really tone that pink down and get that more reddish raspberry colour. Just going to stir that in, make sure we break up any clumps of that mica. And I usually like to just spray the top of this before I start pouring and as you spray it, it breaks some of those bubbles which actually release some of the mica lumps that are floating around in there as well. So by bursting those bubbles you can actually make sure that you have completely got rid of all that or all that mica is actually dissolved into the melt and pour. And I'm really happy with the colour that these are going to turn out. So let's get pouring into the mould. So the mould I'm using today is one of the raspberry ones that I created using some pinky sill and I will leave a link to the video showing how I make my pinky sill moulds. And all I'm now going to do is pour all of these little cavities with this melt and pour. Then I'll let it sit and harden up and as I demould all of those I will then remelt any of this leftover melt and pour and just continue to fill the cavity up until I have used up all my melt and pour. I will have too many raspberries for the soap, but it's always good to have some of those extra embeds um, sitting around. And I often have the raspberries just sitting there. No, in fact, I do have some um, from the last time I made them and they'll be going on the top of this soap as well. So I'm going to leave that to sit to one side and I'm going to move on to doing the next embed. So while those raspberries are setting up, I'm going to move on to the next little embed that we're also going to make for the top of the soap. I've got about 100 grams of my oil mix here and I have my lye water solution as well, all calculated through soap calc. I am going to pour my lye water into my oils, give it a very quick blend up and then I'm going to split it out for just a little bit of colouring. Okay, so I've given that a really quick pulse because it is just so um, such a small amount. It is sitting probably between a light and a medium trace there. So first thing I'm going to do in this little cup here, I have got some Tuscan Sun Mica, which I have mixed with just the tiniest bit of oil from out of this before I blended it just to make it easier to blend in to this tiny amount of soap that we're making. So it really doesn't look like a lot and it really isn't. This is so I can do the centers of these flowers that I'm going to be piping. So I'm just gonna give that a good stir. Because I've mixed that mica in with some oil, it's going to disperse within that um, soap a lot easier than if I just added the powder into it. 
So that is all nice and stirred up there. It really is not a lot in there, but I really don't need much at all. Into this other pot, I have got some Magic Violet Mica, which is from my Mica Obsession. And I have also mixed that up with a little bit of the oils that came out of this original mix here. I'm going to get as much out as I possibly can, and I'm going to stir that in. Actually, you know what? I think I actually want this to be a much darker purple than what I've got. So I am going to add in some purple liquid colorant from Aussie Soap Supplies. This is really leaky, so I'm going to go and pop that in the sink so I don't get dye everywhere. All right, so that's in the sink out the way, so I'm going to give that a stir, and that is going to come up a much nicer purple. Okay, so I added in some more of that liquid purple colorant because I've decided I need a really deep, dark purple to go in here. I'm going to let this set up for a little bit more and then we're going to get it into the piping bags and come back and pipe our flowers. While waiting for these to set up, we have just had a big rumble of thunder come through and then this rain shower as well. I It looks like it has finished. Hopefully it won't start again while I am doing this piping, but this is ready to go. So I really do need to start actually moving on with this. What I have got in my bag, we're going to be piping violets. So I've put the purple into one of these bags. These are disposable but biodegradable bags, so they do break down. In this one, I have a Wilton 59S tip. And in here, I have just put that little bit of yellow and I've cut the very tip of this bag off because I just, with the amount in here, if I try putting in a um, piping tip, I'm just not gonna be able to squeeze it through um, because of the metal part there. What I've got on my piping nail here, I've actually put a template. Whenever you look at the Wilton videos and a lot of the other baking videos on how to pipe violets, they use this template. I've actually made this up on my Corel Draw program um, based off of the templates I was seeing because I actually don't know where to buy those templates from. And um, I've created my own little sticker to go on the top of this nail. Basically what we're going to do is up in this sort of top part of the um, flower nail here, where it's darker, I'm going to create two small petals the size of this dark area. So we'll put one on this side and one on that side. And then on the bottom, I'm going to do three smaller but slightly longer petals. There are so many different violet shapes out there, but this seemed to be the most traditional, most common type of violet. There are violets out there that also have like five, um, with their five petals, they have two big ones at the top and three small ones at the bottom. Some of them only have four petals. There are so many different varieties out there. So this is just one of the ways. What I'm going to do is with my piping tip so that the curved edge is pointing down and that indented bit is squished down, pointing up at the top. I am just going to start by squeezing and creating some big petals. So as I'm squeezing, I'm slowly turning my nail um, just to get an almost like C sort of shape. So there are my first two petals. Down the bottom here, I'm going to create a slightly larger or longer petal, I should say. So I'm going to squeeze and as I squeeze, I'm gonna move my piping bag up ever so slightly and come back down. So I'll see if we can get that a little bit closer. I am going to start about there. I'm gonna squeeze, push up, and come back down. And it creates like a little tight C shape. And I'm gonna do another one here. I will bring the camera closer in zoom in just a minute, but I need to be able to see what I'm doing as well. So that is the start of our flower there. I'm then going to get my yellow, I'll just squish it down to the bottom, and I'm just going to add, so that's the top, I'm going to add two little, hopefully, that's it, two little yellow dots for the centre of the flower. Now if you've watched any of my videos before, you when I'm piping flowers, you know I either grab a knife or whatever I can find, but look, I've actually bought myself a proper palette knife for doing this with now, so I'm going to slide that underneath, pick it up and pop it down on my tray, and we'll move on to the next one. 
Okay, so let's get another one going. So I do have enough soap on there to be able to pick up another one of these. I've just put my band around the top of my bag here. I find these bands really good for actually helping to get that really nice even pressure that you need. So we're going to start by doing the two smaller, or I should say shorter but wider pedals. And then I'm going to do my long, smaller pedals down here. See. And then we're going to go for that bit of yellow and I'm just going to pop the centre straight in there like that. And I'm actually just going to pick, because these are so small, I think it's going to be easier to do it by hand. So I'm going to put a bit more soap on my nail, pick up another square. And then I'm going to bring you a bit closer down so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right. So I've put just enough soap on there to actually hold it all in place, but not so much that I can't see where the lines are on here. So again, I've got the curve of my piping tip pointing down, and I'm going to start doing the shorter, wider pedals. And I'm actually using that whole sort of, they're probably almost thirds of the circle. So I'm going to come and do kind of like a bit of a C shape. We'll come back here and we'll do that one again. The trick is to make sure that you're applying nice even pressure when doing these. And we're going to come down to the bottom and do the three. So I'm coming up a little bit further, but not coming out as wide when I do these ones. So we get three long but narrow pedals. And the top will be those wider ones. So I'm just going to come back in with my bit of yellow here. Oops, we've got a bit too much. So we'll just leave it like that. And that is another violet. All right, so let's try another one here. All right, so the more of these that you actually start doing, the better your flowers, or I find the better the flowers start to turn out towards the end. So when I'm first starting, I'm trying to get the feel for exactly how much um, soap needs to be piped out each time, how much pressure for each of the petals and then after you've done quite a few of them you really start to get the feel for it and they become a lot quicker to actually do and the more like the actual flower that you're trying to pipe. So but as I said the actual real key to this is to apply even and constant pressure each time. But something else to remember as well is that in nature, they're not perfect anyway. They all will have little torn petals. They will have um, different sized petal. Each flower will have different sizes. And you know, mother nature is not perfect in itself. So it really doesn't matter if your flowers aren't um, spot on either. I'm just gonna come out just a little bit more. That's it. And I will start to speed this up. suddenly got really 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 hot here I woke up this morning it was only 19 degrees we've had the last couple of days where we've woken up and it's only been about between 17 and 19 degrees in the morning so I was looking forward to a really nice cool day you know beautiful autumn day where the temperatures are bearable and you can do things and um, I dressed for such weather but that little rainstorm that we have had has really shot up the humidity. We have had some absolutely insane weather lately. We've been in autumn for four weeks now. So we should be having some really lovely days of about 26, 27 degrees. 
but in actual fact we've been having days that are in 33, 36 or 33 to 36 degrees with really silly high humidity. We've also been getting what would have once been known as afternoon summer storms and we haven't seen summer storms well in the years that um since my husband and i moved back down to brisbane we haven't actually seen summer storms in the six years that we've been back down here so it's been really odd to see these summer storms in what we thought was autumn and i was starting to get a little bit confused because i've been under the assumption that for the last four weeks we have been in autumn um, started on the 1st of March and therefore we're now into April it sh should be autumn and I was watching um, some YouTube channels and I was going through Instagram and people were saying and this is about a week ago people were saying oh spring starts in a couple of days time we're so excited it's like but spring should already be there because we're in autumn and it kind of got me curious because I was thinking well why do I think we are in autumn have I just had it wrong for well I can't really say my whole life because I actually don't remember when I learnt when all the um, different seasons were but I got really curious and I decided to have a look at when the season started in Australia and I was very very surprised at what I found out um, I haven't been wrong with when I have thought that the season started what I didn't realize is that at some point in history Australia decided to simplify the whole seasons sort of timing and decided to make it the first of every three months was when the seasons changed so hence the first of march was meant to be the start of autumn and why i have been so confused that people have been saying that spring starts um in late march up in the northern hemisphere so there's a silly piece of useless information for you guys i'm not sure why it was decided that australia was going to do something so different to the rest of the world whether it is just australia or whether it is in fact the whole of the southern hemisphere that does it i or not, yeah southern hemisphere i really don't know but that probably explains why because you guys would still actually be in winter in the northern hemisphere and therefore we should still actually be in summer which would then actually explain why we are getting summer temperatures and summer storms when we're all thinking it should be autumn because technically the rest of the world is in the correct season so yeah just a random piece of information so i am going to keep getting these done and then i'm going to come back and we'll we'll ugh, and we will unmold the raspberries that we've got okay. I've got my violets in the fridge just helping them to set up ready to go on the top of the soap I am now ready to start popping these um, raspberries out of the mold they are coming straight out all these little bits of scraps that come off with them I'm just going to pop them back into the jug melt them back down and I'm going to pour another lot of these raspberries as well and then I should be ready to move on to the soap which will feature in Saturday's video so I hope you have enjoyed watching me make the embeds for Saturday's video if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below I will get back to you with any answers to questions Questions that you may have um, if you're new around here why not subscribe to the channel and if you want to see what happens on that Saturday video don't forget to hit the little bell sign and it will let you know when that video is uploaded so thank you so much for watching and until Saturday I hope you have a great week and I'll see you then bye